that's what I have found to be solid truth right there, leaning on the everlasting arms. Now, if you have been here on Wednesdays, this scripture will sound familiar. You could probably even quote it by heart. But um, uh, this past Wednesday, my dad was, um, he wasn't feeling well, and I was in town for the holidays. Didn't have to be on the road at all. And uh, uh, actually got home that Wednesday morning and um, uh, knew kind of right off the bat he wasn't going to be here. So uh, he's been speaking on um, the mental health crisis on Wednesdays. And I, Brother Dan, uh, after the service on Wednesday, he said, Brother, Brother Jake, um, Your Excellency, Majesty, Pastor Jake, what, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, 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 what's the title of the message tonight? I said, the, the Mental Health Solution. The Mental Health Solution. And uh, I spoke just for a little while on uh, some solutions or biblical prescriptions, medications, that we can use for, uh, for our mental uh, well-being. Now, studying on this, and, and I really like the, um, the, um, the study of the mind. I really like to learn how it works. And not that I'm any type of um, um, science nerd, or, uh, and I don't mean that as a disparity in any way, but I'm just saying I'm not, you know, I'm not all about it. It's not necessarily a hobby of mine. It's intriguing. I like, I like things like that, the brain, the mind, and things like that. I read a fact that it says the only nerve in the body that directly connects into the brain is the optical nerve. And the brain sends out, the brain sends more information out than the eye does in. And I remember thinking that this morning, and I was right in Houston, and I went to go pick up Bill, and I was looking around, and it's gray. It's foggy, it's raining, it's a dreary day. But it was a dreary day because my brain was telling my eye that's what we were seeing. My eye was not telling my brain that's what we were seeing. My brain was telling my eye, this is, a, this is, a, this is gonna, it's gonna be a low day, it's right after the holidays, you know, my spirit's kind of down because of the weather and because of, you know, you know some things, nope. That right there is the mind game. Your mind, your mind as a Christian, that's your greatest asset, is your mind because the battle is for the mind. Because if the devil can get your mind, he can get your actions. If he can get your thought life, he can get just about anything. Uh, the battle for the mind. Now, uh, I think that's a great um, part of repentance. As people say, change your ways. The Bible says, no, repent and change your mind. Change, give me your mind, individual. Give me your mind. Um, and and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a battlefront that I'd like to engage more in is understanding the mind, not as a psychologist, but as a, as a human being who has to live this life and has to engage in all of its, its, um, it, its, 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 its whatnots, its ups and its downs and its good and its bad. Now, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. And so what has happened is how this came about, this message, of course, is through reading the Bible, but it's been a more of a contemplation and a meditation on uh, what's been being uh, uh, taught on, on uh, Wednesdays. And I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, expound on what's being taught on Wednesdays. I have um, sort of it, my own message that it will divert um, a bit of that. Now, that's uh, one thing I like about the Bible is, is uh, some truths. You know, you and I can read the Bible through in a year, and your life was changed in one way, and my life was changed in another. I, I read the book of Proverbs, and my life is admonished in one way, and you read the book of Proverbs, and your life is admonished another because you have strengths and weaknesses, and I have strengths and weaknesses. And um, the Bible is um, it's an incredible Incredible book. Now, Philippians chapter four, verse number eight. We'll read it together, and then I'll uh, uh, go. We'll go into prayer before the Lord and ask Him to bless uh, the message. The Bible says in Philippians chapter four, verse number eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things <clears throat> are uh, just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue. If there be any virtue, uh, and if there be any praise, 
Think on these things. Think on these things. Now, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. This is the day that you have made. Help us to rejoice, to rejoice in it and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, meet with us today. I'd ask that this message would uh, speak to somebody who uh, may be on this particular path, somebody who may needs to hear this. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us, help our church work, Lord, at Three Rivers Baptist Church, work through us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, <clears throat> yesterday, uh, I had through uh, several different avenues, uh, I was talking to my dad and how we got to this, this particular point, I don't know, but I just put it out there. I said, how is it that, okay, yesterday, Saturday, Saul winning, Jamie and I planned family day last week for this, for yesterday, Saturday. But I have this desire. I want to see people saved. I want to go soul winning. Like, I want to go soul winning. I want to see people saved. I want to see the church of Christ, this church of Christ grow. I want to see Three Rivers grow. I want to see sinners come to repentance. I want to see lives changed. Drug addicts no longer addicted. Drunkers no longer get their life sobered up and cleaned up. Marriages come back together. Kids come back to God. I believe that can still happen because he's still on his throne and he has not blown the trumpet and we're not all out of here yet. So uh, the, the, the works that God has done, he can still do. So I believe in that. And it basically got down to, Dad, how do I balance being a pastor and, and, and family and, and a job. How do I balance all that? How do I, how do I wrap my mind around that? Because I, 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 can't, I don't feel like I'm being successful in, in them. I feel like they're just surviving. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm underwater and I'm breathing through a straw. Now, I'm not saying that, that I'm in distress. I like being a pastor. I like being a husband and a father. Um, I like, um, I don't like working, but I like, uh, I, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of driving a truck. It's not something, you know, I, I already have, um, uh, but it doesn't matter. But, but I, I don't like, I'm not, I don't know. That's a big responsibility. It's dangerous. It's inconvenient. It's, it's, it's difficult. There's all kinds of regulations that come with it. And, <sighs> it's a lot of work. I don't want to do it but I, I, I am doing it. And okay, since I am doing these things, I want to do them well, right? Anything that I find myself doing, I want to do well. I don't want to just do it. Like, I don't want to just survive in life. I want to thrive. I want to thrive. Um, but I don't want to thrive because I'm, I got there. I want, to th I want to thrive because I got there God's way. I want to do what the Bible says I'm supposed to do and thrive, okay? But this is the understanding. Just because you're a born-again Christian, just because you're saved, just because you believe the Bible, and just because you try to do your best, there's no guarantee in the Bible that your life is going to thrive. We just saw in our Sunday school class how S Stephen was stoned to death. Pa Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded. Now, I have the incredible opportunity of being a Christian in the United States of America with our foundation. And I know let's, let's, let's just for a moment peel back the layers of the brokenness of America and go down to what she was founded on and go down to her core and her essence. Her essence has been this book. When God was incorporated and God was involved, this country had a much larger blessing on it. Um, and, and I have a blessing to be born in America. And it, by the way, as broken as America is, she's still the greatest country in the world. Amen. I'm here in America, in America. And get this, get this. And, and I'm not, this is no way, shape or form wokeness because all men are created equal, but I am a white man in America. There has, we, we, we're not perfect. We've got some pretty ugly history of how we've treated mankind. I mean, the way we took this country, uh, and like I said, I'm not trying to get woke. I'm not, I'm not trying. I'm, I'm so far from woke, but I'm saying let's be real. We, of course, we were, in, by the way, before we were warring with the Indians, Indians were warring with Indians. Let's just put that there. 
but we came and conquered it. That's what world history has been since big, the beginning, is conquering, exploration and conquering. That's all it has been. It just so happened it was our turn. And we took this land, good and bad, and how it developed and how it grew and how it, and, and I've got it going. There, and you say, what do you mean you got? Because there are um, perceptions in America that if you are over six feet tall and uh, you've got blue eyes or you've got this skin complexion or you look like this or you've got um, good bone structure or you've got good weight or you carry, you got muscle structure or whatever the case, that you've got it going. But the fact of the matter is just cause your, my eye color never got me anywhere. My skin color never got me anywhere. My hair color never got me anywhere. That never got me anywhere. Nobody said, wow, nice eyes. Would you like a job? They didn't do that. I've been trying to get into the model agencies for all kinds of time now, and they're just not having it. Uh, but um, uh, I, tried, I tried to get into hand modeling, but that didn't go quite well either. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I am nothing of myself. Now, the world says if you are made of this and if you look like this and if you have this, you may be able to live a different, a better lifestyle than others. And what you have to fend off is, is the world's philosophy. Now, I talked on Wednesday about uh, uh, strongholds in our life. And I said, ultimately, strongholds come from two places. They come from, one, a worldview. A worldview. Now, I don't have a worldview. I have a, what I believe is a biblical Christian view. I don't have a worldview of how the world works. Um, now, I have a personal view. A personal view. So this is where the, this is the changing of my mind. Get this. Be renewed, be changed, be transformed by the renewing, the changing, the 180 of your mind. Is Lord, let my view form to yours. Let my view come to form to yours. Because I feel like there, and myself included sometimes, there's a lot of preachers, uh, and I'm a preacher, and, and a lot of them get unhappy about their ministry. Not with the people. I love the people. But, but the ministry isn't, listen, God is in it. Isn't it supposed to be big? God's in it. Isn't it supposed to be special? God is in it. Isn't it supposed to thrive and grow and be alive and electric? Not necessarily. We sing a song. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. A lot of preachers, what we're doing is we're kind of, we're hoping that, uh, that a, a door's going to open up of opportunity, or maybe it's dead here, and I need to move somewhere else. But that's, that's never the part. They say, well, maybe if we can um, maybe change our location. Maybe if we get a new building. Maybe if we got some sort of new program. Maybe if we adopted uh, uh, some of what these, new, these newer churches are doing, it would attract people and it will solve our problems. That's, that's not a biblical view. That's not a right view. And this all came from a conversation of, of not, 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 th not thrive. That, that was my summation of my thoughts. If God just wants me to survive and in him and in his eyes, I'm doing his will, then I am thriving because there's no greater success in the life of man than to do the will of God and obey his commandments. And I fall short of it. I fall short. I, 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 in my prayer time this morning, I said, Lord, if I could have anything, I want to know this book better because I want it to make sense to me and I want it to clear up my life and I want it to clean up my life and I want it to give me peace. That, and it does, peace that passes all understanding. In my prayer time, I said, God, you don't have to prove yourself to me. You've done it before. But Lord, I... Would you prove yourself through it to me? Show me, show me what I'm doing. I would hate to get on a job site and then be like, okay, here's your welding mask and here's the welder and here's your gloves. Get to welding. And you're like, I've never welded before. And so many Christians, they walk into a church and they say, okay, here's the service times, here's the Bible and here's the song book. Come on and get involved. And they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. And a lot of Christians, they, that's, they've been doing that because they believe there's, I'll get it one of these days. I'll figure it out. And they've been saved five years and 10 years and 15 years and 20 years. And they go, 
I thought things were going to be different. Like I thought, and even if you don't say I thought things are going to be different and you know the grace of God, you go, man, I, am I doing it right? So you do take that 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 stick, you that welder and helmet, and that and that um that welder and all the and you do start laying a bead down, and you're like, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. And you look up to your foreman, you know, you look up to the Lord, and you're like, Lord, am I doing it right? When I went over here and started working and and, and chaining loads down, I'd send pictures to my boss that I and I told you, and I, I said it, you know, it was kind of funny, um, but that's the way dispatchers do you. They'll lie to you. Um, I get out to Raleigh, North Carolina, and they tell me I'm picking up a 9,000 pound mini excavator. They left off 20 extra thousand pounds. And it wasn't mini. It was maximum. It was fun size. Amen. It was big. And I said, okay, well, I'm here. How do I chain it down? And so I chained it down the best way that I thought physics would hold it down and tension. And um, I said, okay, let me send some pictures. And he said, okay, yeah, that'll work. Nobody taught me how. I had to figure it out. I had to f- figure it out. Um, uh, same thing with little Deacon. He's, he's, you know, he went from his belly. Now he's on his knees. Now he's doing downward dog yoga position. You know, he's got his rear end in the air, his head all the way down. And, and he's, he's figuring out, trying how to learn how to crawl. I'm not, I didn't teach him how to crawl. I didn't teach him how to crawl. But in his mind, his mind is working behind the scenes looking at mom and dad and brothers and family and people all around him, the world around him, standing erect and walking. And his body knows. Now, he doesn't know. Consciously, he's not thinking, I'll be there one day. He's, but he's just existing, letting himself grow on the sincere milk of, of mom. Now, if the Christian will stay, what the Bible, Paul says, on the sincere word, uh, sincere milk of the word, you'll grow also. But it's unnatural not to grow. There's a time when a Christian should grow. Now, you say, okay, so Brother Jackson, you're saying that you're, you're trying to figure out the whole will, not the whole will, but just, am I doing it right? Are we doing it right? I want to make sure that I'm doing this right because I do believe in the great white or the judgment seat of Christ. I do believe that I will stand in awe of God's presence one day. And I do believe that my, my works will be put on the altar and wood, hay, stubble, uh, gold, silver, precious stones, and they'll be tried by fire. I do believe that's going to happen. I do my, believe that my life's works will be judged. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. So I told my dad, dad, how, how do I can be, how do I be an on fire pastor, soul, winner, preacher, but how can I be all in on ministry and all in on family? How in the world do you do that? A lot of pastors have said, you incorporate your family into the ministry. No, nope. I ain't the way to do it because I believe family has to see a distinct difference between dad pastor and dad dad. Not that dad's a fake, not that dad's different at home, but dad dad, a da- uh, husband Husband, pastor. There's got to be a difference. There's got to be, and I was, a, I was a husband and I was a father before I was a pastor. And the first ministry that I had was my family. That I have is my family. Now, I do not put my family above, above God. But this is the way I ordered it out. God, family, everything else. Or God, family, ministry, everything else. Now, my family's got to understand when it's time for, it's time for preaching. My family knows that. Ask me to go out of town on Sunday. No, they know where I'm going to be on Sunday. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be right here. It would be foolish to ask anything else because they also understand when dad's home, dad's home. Jamie, she, I, I get home on Friday sometimes. I don't, do you want to go out and get food? No. We live in such a great age, food can come to us. You know, uh, uh, bring the food home, you know. Uh, and, and a lot of people, what happens is, is they think, if, if I just change the scenery, if I just got out of the rut that I'm in, it'd solve all of our problems. A lot of church members, they're unhappy. A lot of families are unhappy about their circumstances, their health. Anybody in here happy about your health? You're like, I'm aces. I'm totally good. I don't have to take any special medic- medicines. I have, don't have to take any. Uh, Lucas is 12. He's, got, he's allergic to everything outside. 
It's like he's allergic to everything. He's got to take a shot. Uh, I'm not excited about my health. I'm, 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 how old am I? 35. I'm my brain. I'm, I'm not excited about what's going on in there. I'm 35. And I've, 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 I've lived, um, uh, not necessarily hard, not bad hard, but like sports hard and, and, and kind of stunt man hard for a little while. And it's come back to haunt me a little bit. Um, and then just the, the, the happenings of life, but we're not happy. We're not, we're not, um, uh, content with our health. Our job, your salary, your career, your, where, your house, your residence, your marriage. A lot of people are living today, they're miserable, and they can hardly wait for a change. They're biting at the, the, they're chomping at the bit for a change. But the fact of the matter is, 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 is I don't believe that God, I don't believe God would, would have Christians and I don't believe it is God's will for our life for a Christian to be bitter and unhappy and have a poor attitude. That's not God's will. It's not God's will for us to be confused. It's not God's will for us to be lost. It's not God's will for us to be out of sorts. Now, Philippians, our, our verse, he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Now, I'll make a statement. <clears throat> contentment, contentment is not a state of circumstance. Contentment is not a state of circumstance. It is a state of mind regarding your circumstance. Regarding your circumstance. Saying, if I only had this car, I'd be happy. No, I'm happy I have a car. I'm happy I have a car. If, if I only had that house, if I only had that man or that woman, if, I, if my family only had this, if I only had four bedroom, three bath on um, 10 acres with a natural pond in the back and, and that had a creek running through it and, and uh, two pole barns and um, a long driveway lined with trees and a wraparound porch and uh, you know some dirt bikes and four wheelers and I had a, a truck and the family SUV and, um, uh, and we had the clothes that we needed and we had all the storage that we needed and we had all the things that we needed, I would be content. No. Being content is being is saying not is not saying if I only had, it's saying I do have, I do have, and I'm happy with that. I do have, and I'm happy with that. Uh, when the uh, soldiers came to John the Baptist and they asked him about right living, he told them in Luke three fourteen. He said, "And be content, be content." with your wages. The Bible has a lot to say about being content, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6. but godliness with contentment is great gain. Two verses later in, in, in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 6, he says, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. I have food, I have clothes, I have a place to lay my head, I'm content. Now, that's, a, that's hard to, as Americans, that's hard to wrap our head around because we know there's, a lot more to be offered. We are tempted in this day and age where kids opening presents on YouTubes are becoming millionaires. And we go, if what? Yeah, because it's about how many views you get and how many people see that product or see that thing which are driven to buy that product which you get percentages of or you get money for following. You get what? No way, that's incredible. Yeah, Money is easily made today. It's easily made. And that's what the devil, that's one of the things the, the world, the flesh, and the devil will try to get Christians um, uh, off of the big thing, off the big picture with is the ease of getting things. When the Bible says, in all labor, there is profit. I'm not against an easy dollar. I'm not against money. I'm not against wealth in any way, shape, or form. I like that stuff just like anybody else. But it's how it's got, how it's gotten, how it's, gained ill-gotten gains they never last they they never last uh the bible says in hebrews 13 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have for he hath said i will never leave thee 
nor forsake thee. Jesus is with you in that hoopty, just like he'd be with you in a Bentley. Jesus is with you in that shack, just like he would be in that mansion. Jesus is not with you more because you're in a mansion or because you're in a Bentley. He's there because you want him there. And he's there because you're content with the things that you have. Writing from prison, <clears throat> Paul, he showed that uh, he wasn't bitter about his circumstances. He's not bitter about what he's going through. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. For I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now, Paul if you know the life of Paul, that guy's story, it's something else. And I like the book of Acts because he goes through the ringer. I'm talking beaten and stoned and shipwrecked and accused and imprisoned and whipped. And I'm just, his life went, we would look at that and go, God has turned on me. When the fact of the matter is that God was using him in a very great way. Now, how could Paul say that? How could Paul say, I'm, I know how to be hungry and full? I know how to be a bound and a base. I know how to do that. Uh, he wasn't able to get out and, 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 and minister to the people like he wanted to. He said it. Man, I wish I could come to you. Folks, he was locked up. How could he be content with being locked up? I, because, I think because it had to do everything with his thought life. His thought life. And he knew where he was in Christ. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely... And of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I don't think he told the Christians to think on these things, and he wasn't thinking on them. I think he was solidified in those things to be able to tell them, think on these things. So let me give you a couple things very quickly. I'm going to let you out of here early today. Don't scoff. I see some of you scoffing. I'm going to let you out early. Give you a couple suggestions <clears throat> on these things. Think on these things, and I hope that they'll help you if you're having a problem uh, or you find um, maybe you feel some bitterness about your circumstance. Um, I, I hope this is, uh, will be a help. Number one, think, think, think on the plan of God. Think about the plan of God, the plan of God. The Bible says in Romans 12 that uh, the submission to the Lord and the separation from the world. So submit to the Lord, separate from the world. Then what happens? That it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a help it's a help to help prove us or to test us or to, to, to determine what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. See, if I draw nigh to God and draw away from the world, it, it kind of, you know, get out of the shower and the, the, the mirror is foggy, you wipe it down. Ah, no, you wipe it down and you, you look at yourself and you say, okay, I can, I can see clearly. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. The fog is gone. <clears throat> you, you wipe it clean. You see clearly uh, many times. Uh, late fall, in, uh, no, not late fall. Yeah, late fall, late spring, early fall. Uh, going through, uh, going through Ohio, I'd collect up. Um, um, Ohio, so southeast Ohio, just I don't know what kind of bugs they have down there, but they hit the window shield hard, and my truck was filthy. Late summer, early fall, everywhere, just, and they they spot up the window, so I'd stop at a truck stop and wash the window down. It cleared it up. It cleared it up. No, it's that's a, like the Christian life is like, man, I, I get out in the world. I get out in the world and I the sights, the sounds, the smells, the distractions, the thoughts that flood my mind, that enter into my eyes and my ears and ultimately trickle down into my heart. What they do is they cut off communication with what he's trying to see. Because God's not jumping up and down and yelling and, and waving his arms like a stranded, a stranded man on an island saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. He's saying, I'm here. You know where to find me. You know, that's a characteristic of the Lord. I told Miss Sarah on Saturdays, 12, uh, 11, 15 to 11, 20, we're done. I'm not, not one minute over. Not one minute over. Holy Spirit, let me do this, please. Don't, don't talk through me. Don't use me. A lot of people do that all the time. I just talk, 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 talk. It's just the Holy Spirit used me today. And you're like, oh, really? I don't think he did. Um, uh, and we blame the Holy Spirit for making us go over time. Um, and I think it's evident when the Holy Spirit moves. Uh, several weeks ago when I preached um, uh, about being a brook in the way for people, uh, there were tears all over the auditorium and people hugging and, and, and um, uh going over to people across the aisle and meeting up. That was awesome. 
That was, that was something great. And I, I know that the Holy Spirit of God met with us that day and we were over time. So for example, I can say the Holy Spirit did that. Most of the time, it's just because I'm long winded. <laughs> I can't get, the, can't get the landing gear down on the plane, try to land that bad boy. Uh, the people are jumping out with their parachutes, you know. <laughs> We're staying up here forever. Uh, but um, uh, God, God wants us to know the, will, the, the trust that he has a will for our life. Uh, and I, if I draw nigh to God and separate from the world, that picture becomes clearer, Romans 8, 28. Now, do you believe in God's watchful care in your life? Do you think he does? It says it. I quote it all the time. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. And if I believe that he cares for me, then I have to believe in Romans 8, 28. If I truly believe in, in 1 Peter 5, 7, then I, that only backs up Romans 8, 28. In light, on all of my circumstances, I've got to believe in it. God either allowed me to be where I am, or he, direct me, or he direct, directly placed me there. And I don't want to rebel against God's will. The last two years of my life have been, is it God's will? 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 I don't want to go. I don't want to do the wrong thing. I don't want to move somewhere and it not be God's will. I don't want to take a job and it not be God's will. I don't want to. Now, I know God's will. He wants me to be a soul winner. I know God's will. He wants me to love my love my uh, my. Uh, my life, my wife. Uh, I, I know God's will. He wants me to raise my kids right. I know God's will. He wants me in church. I know God's will. He wants me to, he's been commanded, I've been commanded to do those things. I'm commanded to tithe. I'm commanded to be good to my neighbor and love my neighbor. Those things I know are the will of God. But as to, Lord, is it the right thing? Should I, should I move? Should we purchase a home? Should I buy this new car? Should I take this job? Should I, what, Lord, what should I do? What should I do? I don't want to make the wrong move. Anybody play chess in this room? You play chess? What are you going to do? Make the wrong move? What happens if you make the wrong move time after time after time? Checkmate. Checkmate. Now, the, clue, the great thing is God's a God of another chance. He'll let you get your life reset. He'll let you. And now I don't want, though. I don't want that, though. David went to the brook and he picked out five smooth stones. I don't think it's because um, he thought he was going to miss four times. I think it's because he knew Goliath had brothers. I think he said, oh, and he, hey, his brothers might not be there, but there might be some other fellows there. And this is my weapon. If I'm going to war, I'm not just going to, that's my one target. I'm going to put in one bullet. No, I'm going to load up that magazine and say, pow, 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 pow. I'll make sure you're dead. I don't think David went to war and said, all right, there's one smooth stone because I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. No, but David knew I'm going to fight that Goliath. That is the Goliath that has defied my God that's called names. I'm going to go fight him. I'm not going to go. I don't want to go make a bunch of mistakes. I want to stay on point and stay on the path and stay true. That's what I want to do. I don't want to waste my life. My life's only got a certain amount of time and it's ticking away as we speak. At right now, my life is ticking away. I'm one, one day closer to the grave than I was yesterday. And I want my life to matter not just <clears throat> for something, but for his something. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Folks, you can't do the finding if you didn't first do the seeking. Seek and ye shall find. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So these questions of life, am I doing it right? Am I on the right path? Am, am, I, am I figuring it out? Is God, is God pleased with my life? Well, the way to do that is to draw nigh to God and separate from the world. That's one way of <clears throat> getting God in, the, uh, uh, in, in uh, tandem with you and to dovetail your life, if you will, with God's word for obedience, obedience to his book so he can use you. Number one, think of the plan. Number two, number two, think of the power. Think of the power that comes with it. The Bible says after, um, uh, uh, or excuse me, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And this was after he said he was content with being shipwrecked and beaten and put in jail. I can do all things through Christ. Folks, you can prevail in your circumstances. See, I, 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 and that's something that I always have to look at. I, I, I look at something and go, I don't like this circumstance. I will prevail over this circumstance. And many times it's, well, wait a second, Jake. Sometimes you just have to let a circumstance be. Sometimes you just have to let it be. We can't always change what's going on. Sometimes you just have to let it be. You don't, oh, we, we are the most working country in all of the world. 
We work the most overtime. We work the most holidays. We work the most days a week, the most hours. We are a working country and we are a go out and do it kind of people. But sometimes God's trying to teach us a lesson of sometimes you can't do anything about it. See, that's what I'm talking about. I, I, don't, I can't speak for Africa and Asia. and I can't speak for all these countries. But I, I, I'm an American. I kind of have an American mind. And say, we are a busy people, busy doing, busy going, busy, 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 busy. And I think one of the reasons why a lot of Christians get burnt out is because they're always busy doing and they never take enough time scheduled not doing. Going, wait a second, my circumstances, there's nothing I can do about this. You don't have enough money to change it. You don't have the connections to people who have the money to change it. You don't have the knowledge to change it. You don't have the connections to people who have the knowledge to change it. You, do, you have no, there's no way out. There's no rope. There's no ladder. There's no, you're in a pit and there's no way to get out of it. And nobody is coming to get you save one. One who sees you in the pit just like he does see you on the mountaintop. And that's God. God still sees you. But he gives us the power to prevail sometimes over our circumstances. So I do, because I go to a place where I go, okay, Am I supposed to be still and know that you're God? Or am I supposed to be busy trying to change the circumstance? So, and you've been there too. You've been there going, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, first and foremost, you're supposed to pray about it. Pray like it all depends on God. And then number two, you're supposed to work like it all depends on you. But once you've accomplished the work, you continue to pray and through, through that, until you're through that circumstance. You see, the prayer aspect never goes away. There's never a time not to pray. There's never a time not to, to speak with the Lord. But once you've done all that you can do and you can do no more, then Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, leaning on the Lord, knowing that he'll take care of you in all your ways, acknowledging him, and he'll direct your paths. Now, the power, the Bible says that the power gives the idea that the wisdom that was there that created the world, that kind of power that created and sustains the universe, it works in you. That says in Proverbs that the wisdom that God used to create the world, that, kind, that same wisdom is available to us. Of course, not in the same volume as it was to the Lord, just as it wasn't to Solomon, but we can have a piece of that. We can have a piece of wisdom. We're supposed to have wisdom. We're supposed to have knowledge and discernment and understanding. We're supposed to have these things. And those things help us. If you're a child of God and the Lord is in you, you, the Bible says, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Now, the new gospel would say, I can do all things because I'm like Christ. The new gospel would say, I can do all things through Christ because I'm like God. Uh, I, uh, uh, I can do all things through Christ because I am not big G God. I am, li I am a little G God. That's what the new gospel would say. But it doesn't. That's not what scripture says. That's not what God said. God said through Paul, I can do all things. Yes, I can. I can makes a great man. I can. Yes, yes, I can do all things. How? Through Christ who, who strengthens me. Uh, or excuse me, which strengthens me. I can do those things. I have the power to prevail. I have the power to prevail in the sense no, to know when I can't. That's what scripture gives me. The power to prevail because of Christ and the wisdom to know when to be still and let God do his thing. The wisdom to know. Uh, next provision. Think about God. I mean, go back in your mind and think about when God provided for you. Go back in your mind and think when God came through for you. He follows in these verses. He says in Philippians um, 4.19, he follows, um, of course, 13. It doesn't, um, it doesn't promise that you'll never have a need. It doesn't promise that you'll never have needs, like the new American gospel says. But it does say God will provide your need. God will provide all your need according to his riches and glory. How to suffer need, the Bible says. Folks, you can't have a need until you... You, you, can't, you can't have a need supplied until you tell God you have a need. If my life is just perfect and I never need God, then no, it's good to have needs. There's nothing wrong with your life because you have a need. 
God wants to supply them. God wants to supply them. Let God provide your needs. Think of number, uh, number four, the peace that's available. Peace. Folks, when we do right, if we do right, if you're doing right, you should have peace. You should have peace. Doing what, what's, what's right? You find what's right in this book. I've done a lot of wrong. And you know what's fostered in me? Anxiety. I've done a lot of wrong. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've said a lot of things I shouldn't. Had a lot of thoughts that I shouldn't. And you know what? You know what the result is? A humbling experience going before the Lord in humility and saying, dear God, I, I offer repentance. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do these things. And, and you know what I rob myself of when I don't live right? A joyous fellowship with the Lord. If I'm always living wrong, yet still right enough to go to the Lord to, to confess, I have this, the, 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 um, the condition of our relationship is that he is a just and holy God, and I am a very sinful person, and he is the one I go to to confess. And that's definitely, that is a huge, that's, of course that's needed. But where is also, if he is my heavenly father and he loves me and he sent Jesus to die for me, where is the good aspect of our relationship? Where is it that I can rejoice in the Lord always? And again, I say rejoice. If I'm, all, if I'm living wrong, I never have time to go to the Lord and praise him for the things that he's done and glorify him for the beauty of this earth and for the great things that he's accomplished and for saving grace, I'm always going to him. Dear God, would you forgive me? Just as a child, if I had a disobe one of my boys was disobedient all the time, and he came to me, and I had to be the, uh, I had to dole out the punishment all the time. That is not a healthy relationship between a father and a child, between a parent and a child. Sometimes that child is, has got to feel open enough to walk up and give mom or dad a hug and say, Dad, I love you. Thank you for what you do and throw the ball around and draw together and watch the game together and color together and, and, and skip rocks across the pond together. Enjoy each other's fellowship. But I can never enjoy the, 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 the father's fellowship if I'm always going to him and saying, oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, God, I'm sorry. And it's not on him. I can't enjoy it because of my downfalls, because of my strongholds. But man, oh, man, I'll tell you, when I do right and I live right, I find that there's a, a sweet, sweet fellowship with the Lord where I feel like the Lord is happy with me. I feel like, man, God's, God's happy. Anybody ever feel that God was mad at you? Oh, I felt that way. You ever felt that God was happy with you? I have. I have. I felt that God was happy with me. And when I do right and I live right, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. Now, I have several others, and I could go, but I will not keep you captive. Uh, the things that ye have seen me do, keep it short. Uh, uh, think about prayer, prayer and its opportunities. A great prayer, or a prayer brings great opportunities. Correct prayer brings peace, the peace of God. Uh, I'll just give you the scripture, I'll give you the point in the scripture verse, and I'll let you out of here. Uh, Philippians 4 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds, your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, life is confusing. It's full of questions. The heart is continually wondering. I told my dad last night, standing in the parking lot, I said, sometimes I, I just, and he said, want to be alone? <laughs> I said, yeah, I mean, no, no. But I, sometimes I, I don't, the burden, like, ooh, I can tell you sometimes I'm like, wait a second, I am raising humans to be adults. What if one of them goes up and goes to prison? What if one gets hooked on drugs? What if one is just a, a, a rebel against the will of God and, and turns his heart against his parents and hates his, me and his mother? And, 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 and what if that happens? That's not pure and honest and lovely and good report. And that's not denying what could happen, but that's keeping a healthy mind. That's keeping a healthy mind. Because here's the thing, as a parent and as a pastor, I have a duty to raise my kids as best as I know how, according to this word, and let it lay, let it lie. 
Let it be. Uh, uh, and, and just let it rest because he will answer to God. He will. Why am I so concerned about it? Because he's my kid, because I love him, because I want to see him do right. But if he doesn't do right, then, oh, did I fail as a parent, and did I make all the right decisions? And uh, He told me last night one of these times I spanked him, and it was wrong, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, get over it. <laughs> you know, and, and listen, as a parent, I went, oh, in my heart, I'm like, I, I didn't do it. Did I do that? That was, if that's true, and he's not just misremembering, then that was a dog thing to do. But outwardly, I'm like, okay, well, whatever. Did you die? Did you die? Are you dead? Is your life ruined because of it? It's not. Okay, well, do you know that I love you? Well, yeah. Do you know that I would die for you? Yeah. Do you know that I'll feed you and clothe you and give you everything that you want? Yeah. All right, well, homeboy, guess what? Or son boy, guess what? You're my son, and I'm a human, and I'm going to make mistakes. And if you hold that against me, then fooey on you. Now, I didn't say that to him, but I'm saying it today. Then, then, then shame on you. Grow up, because your dad's a human. And uh, where I was going with that was um, psychology. Uh, is, <laughs> is that um, uh, uh, in me, I didn't have peace. I didn't have peace about it. But I went and said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to let the things of my life ruin my present and my future. I'll just try to be a better man. If I did that, I'm sorry. If I made a mistake, I'm sorry. And, and I did it unknowingly. I did it out of good intentions or did it because I was youthful and dumb. But I, I will try to be better. I will try to love Deacon more than I loved you. I will try. <laughs> Smile, boy. But, but uh, uh, I take that stuff to God in prayer. I take that stuff to God in prayer. And he says that God will keep my hearts. It keeps me from trouble. It keeps me from trouble. And it lets me know that the precious things ahead. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, do you believe... I believe that the Lord is at hand. Man, the, the signs of the times, you know. If you do believe that the Lord is at hand in your life, I don't mean he's coming back. I mean, is the Lord at hand in your life? You say, my life is hard. He couldn't possibly be at hand. And then you haven't been reading the Bible. Because just because the Lord is at hand in your life doesn't mean it's it's, it's, it's pillow top mat mattresses and my pillow uh, pillows and, and comfy slippers and silk sheets and comfy robes and um, uh, the comforts of life. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. But it doesn't mean that life is supposed to be hard either. You see, there are promises of God that if life is good, God's there. If life is bad, God's still there. God never went anywhere. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a time for everything, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to, to, to build up and a time to tear down that which was built. There's a time for all those things. So don't get to the point in your life where you question, does God care? Yes, he cares. I know he cares. Is God there? Yes, he's there. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So it's reexamining your position in the Bible principles. Where am I in Bible principles? Have I been a soul winner and I'm not anymore? Have I been a tither and I'm not anymore? Have I been a Bible reader and I'm not anymore? Have I been a prayer warrior and I'm not anymore? Have I been a, a, a lover of others, a fellow man, and I'm not anymore? Did I used to go out and serve my fellow man and to serve my Lord <clears throat> or serve my family and I'm not anymore? And I don't mean this in any type of shame on you way, but that is in essence, it's backsliding. The things that you didn't do anymore, or the things that you used to do, you're not doing them anymore. It's backsliding. There are things that I used to be doing all the time that I, I'm not doing them anymore. And I look at it and I go, I want to do those things. I want to do them. So number one is acknowledging I, I'm not where I used to be. I'm not where I used to be. And there are a plethora of reasons. There are all kinds of reasons. Age and health. Age and health. They go hand in hand. So I'll tell you this, don't beat yourself up on it. Oh man, I, I, didn't, I used to knock 50 doors a Saturday and now I knock five. I'm backslidden. No, you have a knee that's getting ready to like, you know, collapse. I think that's called space for grace. 
There's grace. There's grace in all of God's plan for your life. Life's questions, life's difficulties. But let me tell you this, Christian, don't get bitter about life circumstances. Don't get bitter about life circumstances. If you're a born-again child of God, he has a plan that he's working in you for you to be like Christ. But if you'll separate from the world and draw nigh to God, the picture will become clear. Or at least the peace will begin to pass all understanding. You'll have a peace in it, an understanding in it. So I'll stem from uh, last night, talking to my dad. I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing, just as you do. And uh, what is it? Romans, uh, where is it? Romans, I think it's 8.18. He says, for I reckon, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. See, I'm not seeking for me to be glorified. I'm seeking for him to be glorified. I want to do it the right way. But if I'm seeking him first, I have lived long enough and been in the Christian life long enough to see God bless Christians who are obedient to the book. If we'll be obedient to this book, we'll find God faithful in it. We'll find God true in it. There's no varying with him, no wandering with him. You'll find God true. So when life is confusing and life seems to get bitter, if I was Christian, I'd be bitter. If I was uh, some of you this morning and, and some of the things that you've been, been through that you, shouldn't, you felt like you shouldn't have to go on through, I think I might have been bitter. And maybe you fought bitterness. I went through, through some things and bitterness got me and it about destroyed me. Now, redemption in the Lord and all that, but it about got me. If I didn't have wise counselors and people praying for me in, 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 in my own heart, condemning me and trying to get me right. Bitterness. How not to get bitter about life? Like, man, I'm trying to live for the Lord and do what's right. Why is this not going the way it should be going? Because God's still doing a good work in you to make you, you know, that's the ultimate goal, to make you like Christ, to make you like Jesus. Um, man, the heat got turned up in here. Anybody else cooking? I'm, I'm cooking. Uh, we're going to dismiss. So, those, those peas, my dad gave me a bunch of all oh, the, the purpose and the plan and the pleasure and the plan. I said, I got my own. Just back off. You want to preach, come next Sunday. Uh, but um, I, I'm preaching. So um, I pray for him. He's got a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. He's got a broken tooth and his. <laughs> he's got a broken tooth and I know his, he hurt his back, um, uh, I think doing the dishes or something. Uh, but uh, pray for my dad. Uh, he's, he's doing a lot better. I mean, his, since his heart surgery and everything, and I know that's time passed, but. He's doing a lot better. He's preached multiple, multiple times. He's, uh, he does the Wednesday Bible studies. He's doing a great job. Uh, but keep him in your prayers if you would. Um, but uh, just talking about life. Life. If we'll remember and think on these things. Philippians 4.8. Memorize that verse. I'm telling you, I'm driving down the road. And I'm, Brother Dan, I'm stopping. I'm driving down the road. And we're not going to have an invitation. Because uh, I don't have anybody to play it. And, we, of course, we know music is instrumental in prayer. Um, uh, <laughs> Whew, okay, uh, I'm driving down the road, and Brother Joe, thoughts will flood my head all day long. So I'll take headphones, and I'll put them on, and I'll listen to audible books. I'll listen to podcasts. I'll listen to a lot of sports radio. Uh, I'll listen to um, uh, the Bible. I'll listen to stuff, to, because if I've got noise coming in, I don't have a lot of thoughts bombarding me. But sometimes i got to take those headphones off. You know, you've, heard, you've got your fill of listening to stuff. And then as soon as that happens, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. So what's been getting me, and I've been really studying on or, or thinking on, are these things. Philippians 4, 8. Thinking on these things. And if the thought's not lovely and good and honest and true and uh, full of virtue and good report, if it, if it doesn't have that essence about it, I don't let it in. I've said it. I'll slogan it. I'll put it on a T-shirt. I don't know. I, uh, I, I can't control who knocks on the door. But I can control who comes in. So I've got thoughts all day long. Knock, 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 knock. Open it up. Well, I don't know you. Close. And then sometimes you turn around and they're on your sofa. What are you doing in here? They got in through a window. And sometimes you're chasing rascals out of your house all the time going, what are you doing in my mind? How'd you get in here? And they'd be like, I've been in the closet for three years and I'm coming out now. And you're like, nah, get out of here. And your mind, it's 
coming out of the closet. It's, um, uh, 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 that's, that term is old now, right? Uh, but um, your mind is flooded. It's a war, and the devil's trying to get your mind, because if he can get your mind, he can get your life, and get your life off of Christ, and get you to do nothing for Christ. If the devil can't get your soul and condemn you to hell uh, 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 and keep the blood of Jesus Christ from washing away your sins, the next thing he wants to do is destroy your life and destroy your testimony and destroy your family and get you to be a nothing and a nobody for the cause of Christ. Don't let him have it. The best way not to let him have it is don't let him have the mind. The best way to guard the mind is Philippians 4, 8. Think on these things. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for the, the zeal and the passion of which the Bible teaches us. It's not just a, a soft-spoken teacher, but it's also a, 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 a loud and zealous teacher. It's a passionate admonisher. And Lord, I'd ask that you would help us to, when we are down, to encourage ourselves through the word. And when we are distraught, to lift ourselves up. And when we are sinking low, that we can get on wings as eagles and fly away, amen, and, and be renewed like the eagles and give us strength for another day. Uh, Heavenly Father, I know that you, don't, you have not designed us to live in defeat, but in victory. And not that our life will be roses and, and, and riches, but that it will be victorious over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would uh, empower us through your word, that you would give us what we need, and that you would bless us indeed. Lord, I don't think you are against blessing your children, but it, I don't believe it's everybody's destiny. It's not everybody's destiny to be rich and everybody's uh, fate to live in a, a perfect comfort. And uh, the last thing that we forget is new cars rust too. Old ho uh, new houses settle eventually too. They get cobwebs too. Uh, health deteriorates too. Money, whether gotten by uh, um, uh, by blessing. Or by, uh, by greed, it spends all the same. And one day we can, uh, we can gain blessing by being wise and then begin to live in foolishness and attach ourselves to the world and its allurements and separate from God and your book and then lose it all in foolishness. Lord, I'd ask that you would just keep us, guard us and guide us. Lord, please help us to let your word be a, light, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for Jesus and what he did on the cross and saving us. Lord, I'd ask that you'd give us a great day, a, a wonderful Christmas season, that something special would come about because of it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You are dismissed. Please get loud quick so it doesn't sound weird. All right. <laughs>